hey what's up y'all welcome back i feel like it's been like forever since i actually filmed in general as well as like making a podcast so welcome back to the beyonce podcast or if you're watching on the youtube channel welcome back to the youtube channel so y'all uh i'll catch you up real quick as to the reason why i haven't filmed anything lately <laughs> and as y'all can see chico's like uh i'm about to i'm about to move because you're talking too loud but um we recently moved into a new house so i've been trying to get everything together as y'all can see with these boards um i'm just like in the process of trying to be a little bit creative in this room so once i get everything done i'll actually show you guys but um like i said we recently moved as well as like i've been i was sick for like two weeks no i didn't have the rona but i feel like i had like the flu or something along the lines because it was just really bad my voice sounded absolutely terrible so it just like i would have been miserable filming and you guys would have been miserable hearing me talk because it would have just i would have been like this like <laughs> and coughing and sneezing and it's just just gross just overly gross for no reason which i hate so i was like all right like i'm not even gonna try and film something for them i'm just gonna wait until i actually feel better and you know the the mood is right so here i am on this sunday morning slash afternoon finally able to film a podcast for you guys and i'm so excited i like i said i feel like it's been forever since i actually was able to film something and i've been looking forward to doing it for a while <clears throat> excuse me so y'all might hear me clear my throat a little bit just know i am still getting over everything but i'm like 10 times better than i was before so we're gonna touch base on some social media stuff you know a little messiness um because i've missed a lot since i haven't had a chance to film like um the whole thing dealing with tory lane's dropping a whole ass album and talking about him and megan the Stallion's relationship on it and about how he liked Kylie and saying that like basically saying that she didn't get shot. <laughs> just 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 a shit show. And I, I listened to the album because I wanted to hear what he was gonna say, even though like clearly he shot her. Like there's just there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But I'm like, okay, I wanna actually look at listen to this just for just for curiosity, I'll be honest with you guys. And sadly like okay the songs were like his voice sounded good but i just i it bothered me so much that he really was like let i'm gonna make an album to make a profit off of this situation like this isn't anything that you should take lightly um you shooting somebody and then you possibly i think he could possibly face up to like I think like 22 years maybe not 22 years but he could face time in prison and it's just like it's just a mess when it comes to the whole situation and i honestly i feel bad for megan the stallion and i hope that she gets the justice that she deserves uh while he's just out here roaming the streets being in these clubs and whatnot and making it seem like everything is okay when i feel like it's i don't feel like it's gonna go well for him at all and she released a song with young thug the don't stop i think it's not called don't stop i listened to it a little bit the other day and at first i'll be honest with you i didn't really like it like i think it's grown on me because of the tiktok videos that go with it the beat is good and i mean megan said you know she her flow is immaculate but Young Thug's part in the song just sounded weird to me and I just didn't really care for it. So I'm probably just gonna listen to it a few times and see whether I end up liking it. Bryson Tiller released, <clears throat> Bryson Tiller released his album. Um, I think he released the album after five years of his first one. And overall, I feel like the album is good. I gotta listen to it a few more times. However, it's it, you know it's a, it's a Bryson Taylor album like we're gonna get we're gonna what we're gonna get from him and it's not a bad thing. Hold on one second, y'all. So we're gonna talk briefly about the presidential debate um, between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. That <laughs> that was just a hot mess. Like honestly. 
I'm so over this election. I know, you know, I know it's time to vote, but I'm gonna tell y'all, like, I don't know how in the hell these different organizations or whatever has got my phone number, but I am sick and tired of getting text messages from places talking about, are you registered to vote? And different emails. Like, first of all, registered to vote, got my absentee ballot. It's sitting, um, it's sitting on my end table in the living room right now. It's gonna get filled out and mailed out. And I think you have to have like two stamps to put on before you, um, that way it can get sent out properly. But it's just like, it's so overwhelming. And I know that every single time a presidential election occurs, this happens, but it's just like, it's just getting shoved down your throat. Like, what was it? I was watching something on Hulu last night. I was watching Lovecraft Country. Shout out to Lovecraft Country. I'm on like episode five. I really need to catch up. I know I'm so far behind you guys. Don't come for me. Um, but it was like at least three or four uh, commercials about the presidential election. One was for Donald Trump. The other one was for Joe Biden. And it was back and forth. And it's just like, okay, at this point, I feel like if you're going to vote, you should kind of have a general idea of who you're going to vote for. And at the end of the day, somebody is going to get elected. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I don't know what is going to happen after the presidential election occurs and how people are going to react. It's going to be bad, potentially. So it's just like, I'm so tired of hearing about the election and I'm tired of people talking to me about whichever candidate like i'm over it like just like i i i'm just over it i don't know if y'all feel the same way if y'all don't that's cool but i'm just tired of it i just want to cast my vote and be done with it and then wait and see what's gonna happen and i know the reason why you know people are focusing so heavily on this election is because of what could potentially happen, but it's just like, it's so draining. Not only are we having to deal with the presidential election, we're having to deal with different things that is also going on in the world. And still don't know what the fuck is going on with COVID because where I'm at, I feel like half of the time people aren't wearing face masks and it's like, either you're gonna wear one or you're not gonna wear one. But it's like, don't come around me talking about you're sick and it's because you didn't end up wearing you because you weren't wearing a face mask and protecting yourself and helping protect other people because otherwise that's just like it's just ignorant and i'm just sick of this shit like i just want things to get better before they get worse and i know sometimes that doesn't happen however it's just so much that's going on like i'm just over the presidential election and that's my rant for today probably not y'all probably gonna hear more stuff but it is what it is um, and then, yeah, so with Joe Biden and Donald Trump, that presidential debate wasn't even really a debate. It was more like a pissing match. They were just going back and forth to each other, tit for tat, talking over each other, just being disrespectful. And then, come to find out, Donald Trump ended up getting the Rona. I think it's like, I think it was like him and his wife. I don't know if his son had got it. Um, and that was like a whole escapade in itself. And then... From that, you know, for what was going to be the next presidential debate, um, Joe Biden wanted to have it where it was going to be virtual, and Donald Trump didn't want to do that because he's like, well, I'm, you know, I'm a test negative, like, da da da. And so they didn't even end up having a debate the second time around. Instead, <clears throat> they both held like their own little thing. And it's just like, it's just weird. The only Kamala Harris and um, Pence, they went in each other, and that was like actually like, I felt like that was like a legit debate, like how it should normally be. However, it was boring. <laughs> like it was boring, which I mean, it's to be expected when it comes to the presidential debate. I, in my opinion, maybe when I get older, it'll be a little bit more interesting to me or more so if I was really into politics more, it would be more interesting. However, like the tidbits that I saw, it just seemed, uh, it just seems straightforward, which I would rather see that any day compared to somebody just like antagonizing each other. Then we're gonna jump to sports wise when it comes to the NBA. So the finals is officially over. Um, the Lakers end up winning, which I feel like they deserved it. But at the same time, I feel like if Miami Heat would have won, they would have deserved it also. So with this series, 
Good God, I, I, you know, I knew Jimmy Butler was tough, but I didn't realize he was that tough because I have so much respect for that man. It makes no sense. And I have a lot of respect for LeBron James too, as well as Anthony Davis, like that. I could see, I'm trying to figure out how to word this. I could see why they wanted to win it so bad. Not because, not just because of a championship, but it's like, you know, they also wanted to honor Kobe. Um, due to him passing away recently and I feel like I feel like they did just that and I I saw where LeBron James was like all right you know give me my respect because at the end of the day people say talking shit about LeBron James and it, it, it's terrible because he is a good man he well, he seems like a good man and he has uh had a very successful sports career and I feel like you know that people shouldn't antagonize him as much as they do instead they they do need to put some respect on his name like this man won another championship he won the um the NBA finals MVP and you know he he put the team on his shoulders true enough Anthony Davis is very significant and I think he's going to end up re-signing with the Lakers which would be great um I need y'all to get rid of Danny Green. Not just because of that that one shot, but just in general, like he's just kind of there just to be there in uh Contavious Call of Pope. Cause I don't I just don't even understand why he's on the team. And I don't really understand why J.R. Smith, I don't understand why half of them people are on the team. Because they don't be doing they don't be doing nothing. Like they're just there and they just got a ring and then now all of a sudden you see all their little pictures with a championship and it's just like it's ridiculous. Um, but I am, I'm already ready for the next NBA season. I'm kind of curious when it's going to start. And I, I'm curious who is going to stay with whichever team and who's going to end up getting traded or just signing with a totally different team. Um, so that, that is something to look forward for in the future. Um, Savage Fenty show with Rihanna. I haven't watched that, but I'm so excited. I really want to. I heard that she got like some backlash dealing with I think some music that was played in the show however I mean I haven't watched it yet so I can't really comment on that part um, but I am excited to see the show because that first one was like everything like when I tell y'all that, that first show was like everything I was like okay sis like you got me over here ready to buy some Savage Fenty stuff and I still need to buy some Savage Fenty stuff. I need to buy some dries and some peenies. And if she got perfume or whatever, I need to get some of that. I Y'all know I don't really wear makeup like that. So I highly doubt I would ever get makeup. But you never know. But I know I do want to get some bras and some panties because they look really comfortable and like super duper cute too. Like everybody becoming like a brand ambassador. I'm going to have to hit Rihanna, like, Rihanna up and be like, hey sis, um, this, this is Say. And I would love to be a brand ambassador for Savage Fenty. <laughs> like, like, just hook me up with some bras and panties and I'll do whatever you, whatever you need me to do. I'm going to pose and be like, this is Savage Fenty. Uh, it's two for two twenty nine or whatever, whatever the price is. But I'll, I'll represent. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna talk about, which I always get questions about this, um, probably ever since I became natural, is why I decided to become natural, some of the misconceptions behind it, um, and like different different things when it comes to like my routine and stuff like that. So for people that don't know, which I've made a few videos before, but I mean, I've been natural since 2012 which seems like forever ago. Good God, that is eight years. That's crazy. Um, the reason why I decided to go natural was because I had went to get a perm. And when, when I came out, everybody was like, oh my gosh, you got a haircut. Oh, wow. And I was thinking like, I didn't get a haircut. She barely even trimmed any of my hair. Um, and the hairstylist did an amazing job like i went to her several times before it wasn't her it was me i hadn't been taking care of my hair properly and then from me getting a perm part of my hair had broke off and honestly like whenever i used to get perms like i think the first the first time i got a perm was in the seventh grade and i liked it then 
and then I felt like the reason why I kept getting perms was because like you know everybody thought that like straight hair looked better it was kind of foreign where I was at to see somebody rocking like a fro or having like their curls instead I typically would see somebody with straight hair or I would see someone with like weave in their hair so that's kind of what I was accustomed to um so whenever like before before I even had got that perm done and before I went to the hair stylist, like one of my friends and one of my sisters, they kept telling me about going natural. And I'm like, I don't want to go natural. Like, it sounds stupid. Like, I don't want to do it. it. Sounds like a lot of work. And I'd rather just keep, you know, going to the creamy crack and having having my hair bone straight and all the extra stuff. But then that, that final time when I had got that perm in 2012 and there were so many people, like it was to the point that I was like irritated and upset with myself at the amount of people that asked me um, whether I had got my hair cut and my hair like really looked short. Um, that's why I was like, okay, you know what? Um, I think I am going to go natural because maybe it'll be more beneficial to my hair. And even then, whenever I decided to go natural, I had intentions of getting a perm again. I just wanted my hair to get a little bit more healthier. So that way, whenever I did get a perm, it wouldn't break off the way that it did. So whenever I first went natural, when I tell y'all, I didn't know anything to do. I didn't know what type of hair products to do. I didn't know how to style my hair. At, at first, I didn't know whether I wanted to the, do the big chop or transition. And a lot of people kept telling me that I should do the big chop because like, you know, for one, your hair will like it'll fully grow healthier that way. You're cutting, you're cutting all of the, the permed hair off and it's just, at it's like natural state. However, for me, I feel like I have a big head or at least I have a big forehead. And during that time frame, like it was so much of my hair that was permed that I basically probably would have been like bald headed. So I was like, I can't do it. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to do the big chop. I would rather transition. And with transition, you're just, you're growing your hair out. You're cutting off the, um, the permed hair, the more that your hair grows. So it kind of like, it, it's a little bit easier for people to adjust to like the natural state. I feel like, because you're still, you're kind of still comfortable with your hair being like whatever length it is and it's like you know it's like a slow process well the big chop is is more drastic and it, i feel like it catches the person off guard especially if you're not really used to getting your hair cut like that which last time other than well yeah the the last time that i've gotten like a haircut was in the in the 10th grade and it was like a short haircut and i realized i didn't like it i realized short hairstyles weren't for me but um trying to think what what was I talking about so yes whenever I transitioned I didn't know what type of hairstyle to do I didn't know what type of products to use so if I look back at pictures now it was very entertaining seeing me transition um I remember I'm trying to remember what products I used to use but I used to use a whole bunch of different products and trying to I would try and do like the wash and go thing, which wouldn't work during that time frame because, you know, first of all, I didn't really know about shrinkage like that. And then second of all, I say in Georgia heat. So it's like shrinkage on top of it being hot as fuck. So a lot of times my hair would be like super, super tiny and little tight curls, but you could still see where it was like half permed, half curly and it would be hot so my hair might be like like I might be sweating and it seemed like the the hair products would be it was just it was just bad it was just absolutely terrible and then I kind of started learning about like doing a twist out and um with that that still was like kind of like a work in progress because I didn't really know how I wanted to twist my hair I still didn't know what type of proper products to use so when I tell y'all I had I probably had at least like 20 different headbands that I used to be rocking with these twist outs. Um, and it, I think I gave, I probably gave my niece probably like all of the headbands that I had. Um, but my hair was like looking a little bit better because I was starting to learn how to do more to it. 
and then I was trying to figure out what products work for my hair because I still couldn't try quite figure it out or like what type of oils to use, how often should I wash it, wash it, you know, just so many different things. And I'm trying to think when I started kind of actually, I feel like it was probably like three years ago when I really like learned, okay, this product works for my hair, which for me, it seems like it's the Shea Moisture um, Curl Smoothie. It works for my hair like really well where it helps to find my curls. It, the product doesn't feel like heavy on my hair either. And like it, it's like, it works for like a really bomb twist out. Um, and for me, with my, like the way my hair is, I twist my hair up every single night. Uh, a lot of people probably think that's excessive, but it, I, to me, I like the way my hair looks whenever I twist it up every single night compared to if I just um, pineapple it, which I do that like every, every blue moon, but twisting up, first of all, if I want to twist them small and really like just go out in public with twists, I can actually do that and it just still look cute. Um, unless I decide to do like some Felicia braids, then I'm not going out in public with my hair just twisted like that. But for me, a good twist out works with the right products and the right oils. And then sometimes I put water on my hair, other times I don't. Um, I've kind of been able to develop a routine when it comes to hair washing, even though with us moving and stuff like that, it kind of messed me up a little bit because when I tell y'all like wash day for me, is like an all day event um, because I condition, shampoo, condition, I finger detangle and I put like the products and the oils in and then I twist up my hair. So it's like, I really want to, I like to take my time for my hair because I know that first of all, I'm tender headed. Second of all, I know how I want my hair to look. And um, that is one reason why I am really thankful that I actually listened to my sister and one of my friends about going natural because I don't even know how my hair would have been now at this point in my life if I hadn't went natural. I feel like, I feel amazing having my hair like this. Um, and it took, it took a while for me to get comfortable with my hair being natural. I remember one time, uh, one of my parents, it was my dad actually, like he doesn't really know about natural hair and stuff like that, which I don't really expect him to, but he was always used to me having my hair straight or like having probably like weave in it or something like that. And I went up there one time whenever I was still transitioning and he was like do you want to get a perm what's going on with your hair and I'm like no like this <laughs> you know this is how my hair is um this is how I like it so he I feel like he had to he had to see the whole process because now I feel like whenever he sees me he's like dang your hair has gotten big or whatever or same when it comes to like uh my mom or my sister or my niece my niece is like a little baby natural and it's just the cutest thing in the world to me to see um, her. She First of all, she's learned how to do hair for my sister. And secondly, like she likes to try and twist up my hair. I've twisted up her hair. I try and teach her little things about like natural hair as well as my sister does. And my mom, I don't, I don't even remember the last time my mom has had a perm. So it's just overall, I feel like from me going natural um i kind of feel like it impacted my family a little bit because i don't think my sister i don't remember last time my sister has had a perm either and her hair has gotten like super long and my sister's the type of person she's very versatile with her hair when it comes to like her hair color hairstyles like she has a type, that type of face where she could pull off anything while with me like i told you i don't do short hair short hairstyles because it doesn't work for me it doesn't work for my face um but shout out to the court because your hair be looking good girl <laughs> but um a lot of people have asked me whether it is whether it's easier whether it was easier having my hair relaxed or whether it was easier with my hair being natural um the routine i feel like for natural hair is more detailed compared to my routine that I used to have when I had a perm. When I had a perm, I would wrap it up, put my little bonnet on or whatever, 
or sometimes I wouldn't even wrap it, which is probably one reason why I had breakage. I wasn't sleeping with the proper like um, pillow cover uh, whenever I had a perm and or I slick it in a ponytail, like a, a just bone straight ponytail. And I was constantly putting heat on my hair too, because you know, I wanted to have a little bang, the bang. <laughs> or I just want to have my hair straight and then I try and swoop it at the bottom of it, it girl it, it was just terrible but since then compared to compared to what I did then and what I do now when it comes to the products that I use the time that I take I feel like time wise natural hair it's it's more of an effort but I'm willing to put in more of that effort because of the results that I've received. Um, after I, like I said, after I transitioned, I really noticed the difference in the way that my hair grew. And sometimes I would feel as so though like my hair wouldn't wasn't growing properly whenever I was while I'm natural. But it was also I also had to look into the fact that okay, was I eating properly? Was I drinking enough water? Was I trimming my edges? Like it's just different things that I had to hold myself accountable for when it came to going through the natural hair process. And for me now at this point in my life, I can't ever see like myself even wanting to have a perm in my hair. The only way a perm is ever getting in my hair is if somebody holds me down and forces me to perm my hair. Otherwise, like I like the state that my hair is in now. If anything, I would probably do like, maybe, I don't know. If anything, I would probably cut my hair one day, but I just, I can't see myself wanting to do anything else than like have my hair natural or putting like, maybe like locks in or something like that because they're so cute on some people. I don't know whether I could pull that off just yet which is why I would want to wait for my hair to get longer. And it's gotten, I'm like, is this a, is a good length? Yeah, this is a good length right here. And I, I need to actually go to like a professional um, natural hair stylist, probably like one time whenever I go up to Atlanta for them to cut my hair and shape it and tell me other things. Because with natural hair, you have to always be open to learn new things about your hair as well as like different products and what to look for. Um, and like I said, for me, I had to learn which type of products work for my hair. With that being said, sometimes there may come, become a point in time where a product that normally worked for your hair, it doesn't work for it anymore. So you have to be able to transition. You have to be able to learn from it. And honestly, y'all, like some people probably think that I do so much when it comes to my hair, but in actuality, like I'm like a lazy natural because I kind of stick to the same type of hairstyles with my hair either being out or up in a, a high puff or, yeah, that's like my two go-to, honestly. And occasionally you might see like a switch up somehow, some way, but it's like, I'm so terrible when it comes to learning new hairstyles for natural hair, which I'm hoping this year and next year I'll work on doing that more because I would like to see like more different, I would like to see different hairstyles on myself that I actually did. So um, there's so many people that I know that are natural that do so many different things to their hair that I actually love and adore and wish that I could do. But like I said, I'm a lazy natural, so I'm gonna change that in the future. Um, I think I'm gonna wrap up with saying that if you want to go natural, I'm always, you can always hit me up in my DMs or ask me questions about it um, because it's something that I am passionate about. I've, had, I've been natural for eight years. I'm so thankful that I decided to go natural. It was probably one of the best thing, best one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. I don't regret it at all. And I could give you different tips in regards to it. Like I said, I am a lazy natural, but I can tell you different routines that you could do that will help your hair grow and will help stimulate growth. Um, as well as different products that I have used in the before, before, used before that may not have worked necessarily for me, but it may work for you. Or I could tell you different products that I use now that actually work that if our hair type is similar, um, then it could possibly work for you. So um, closing up, you guys know that I've been trying to have different songs of the week uh, since I haven't filmed in a while. I figured I'd do two and I might kind of keep this as a thing. One new, like one new song, like our generation and an older song. 
So the song I'm gonna choose is Chocolate by Ari Lennox and I think her name is Kiana Letty. It's actually her song featuring Ari Lennox. And I love that song. I love their voices together. Um, they seem like they have good chemistry with each other and just, just their voices, just everything. And then the other song is Whitney Houston, I'm Your Baby Tonight. Because y'all know I love me some Whitney Houston. Like I grew up on Whitney Houston. My mama stayed playing Whitney, Mary J. Blige, and Tony Braxton while we was riding in the back seat or in the house. Well, it was like Whitney, Mary J. Blige, Tony, Luther, Babyface, Keith Sweat. I can name some others, but for now I'm just gonna name a few. But I love me some Whitney Houston. I love that song by her. I always like the music video and her voice was just amazing by far. Um, I can always go to a Whitney Houston song and just look forward to the vocals, the energy, everything. Normally I have a spotlight uh, for a creator um, on my podcast, but this week I don't because I haven't had the opportunity to really research. If you guys would want to be a spotlight on my podcast or on my YouTube, then send me some information about yourself so that way I can also look you up and actually look at whatever it is that you may have to offer because I I always look forward to promoting somebody else. Um, you never know who might need a stepping stone or just in general, if you have great products or you're doing something amazing, like you deserve a spotlight on yourself. Like don't ever doubt yourself. So on that note, I'm going to dip out. I hope you guys enjoy listening to this podcast. Like I said, I know it's been a minute, um, but if you listen to it, don't forget to take a screenshot of it and share it on your Instagram or your Snapchat and make sure you tag me in it because I would love to know who actually listens to it. That way I can kind of get to know you guys better and see what type of things you also like to hear from me too. But um, I hope you guys enjoy your, your upcoming week and that everything that you're wishing and hoping for goes your way.